Hello, welcome to this video about uh, capturing some log4j uh, attack packets. Um, there's a lot of uh, information uh, available on the internet about log4j. Uh, my friend Chris Greer has a nice video on uh, analyzing log4j traffic. He's using the, the packet capture file from malwaretrafficanalysis.net by, uh, by Brad Duncan. Uh, it's got some nice um, examples of, uh, of attack traffic, as you can see here in the uh, in the get request, but it doesn't contain the actual exploit. So I was looking for that and I couldn't find it. And then I found the presentation by Alex Lind um, using um, a, a proof of concept library from uh, from Cosmer on how to set up an attack for yourself. So I thought, okay, if I Maybe I can do that and capture the packets while doing that. So I went over to the uh, Cosmer, uh, Cosmer's GitHub with a Log4j shell POC. And um, yeah, I downloaded the zip file. So I'm going to show you how that process works. So first of all, you need to download the zip file, of course. I don't downloaded all the dependencies already, so you don't want to see that part of the uh, installation, but at least you get an idea of what's, uh, what is needed. So I'm extracting the, uh, the zip file, going into the directory, and if you go back to this page, you can see that to create a vulnerable system, um, there's a docker build command to create the docker image. And you can see that this is quite quickly. If you run this for the first time, it will need to download the Tomcat and other stuff. So it takes a little bit more time, but at least it, the process is nearly the same. So I'm running my vulnerable application as root, or sorry, as a, as a daemon. And if I go to victim.synbit.lab, you will see Oh, sorry, that doesn't work, of course. I need to add a port. 8080, and let's put HTTP in front of it. There we go, there we have the vulnerable application. So I'm starting the, uh, oh, I could have closed this one. I'm starting up the developer tools. And if I go to login with test tests, you can see that it logs in and it says that it will log the information because I entered the wrong password. So let's see in the Java file how that, uh, how that looks. Uh, let's see, source, main, Java, sample, log for fill. Uh, let's see, the login servlet is the one. And what you can see is it's importing the log4j library. It creates a, uh, a logger with the library and it uses it to log the username. So if we use the username to uh, to attack the server, then we should be able to do that. Um, yeah, so let's go over to the attacker side in a minute. Uh, let's first see how this login is uh, uh, performed, so I'm going to copy it as a curl command, so I can use that on my attacker side. So on the attacker side, uh, let's first start a, a Wireshark trace, because that's the whole point of us doing this, or at least the whole point for me doing this. Okay, so capture is running. Let's uh, do again. And again, you can see that it's logging our information. You see one login request over here with the response. So everything is fine there. And if we uh, change the, the data to, um, let's see, so it's TMD colon ldap colon slash slash and then let's put in uh, 
the attacker IP, so that's 203-0-113-217. And let's do it like that and see if it opens up an, an LDAP connection. This is, by the way, the IP address of the uh, of my attacker system, as you can see over here. Um, so let's see if it's now always open. So you see the same post, but now you see that it also tries to open up a, uh, an LDAP connection to the server. But of course, we don't have a attack system ready yet, so we need to do something for that. So again, I downloaded the, uh, the proof of concept over here. So I'm going to unzip it. So unzip the code that's needed. Uh, then I need to extract the, the Java library that I downloaded earlier. If you want to know how, it's in the description on the GitHub page. Actually, I only need the one binary, but I'm extracting it anyway. So, um, going back to our uh, page over here, let's see how we need to start it. So, we need to create a refer shell. The refer shell is what the exploit will connect to to provide us access to the system. And we need to start up. The, the proof of concept over here. So let's first uh, create the shell. So now I'm listening on port 9001 to create, uh, accept an incoming refer shell. And I can start the proof of concept over here, but I need to change the IP address to my attacker IP because it will be included in the Java class and in the uh, in the exploit. So, 217. What this script does is it opens up um, an LDAP connection on port uh, 1389, and then it opens up uh, a web server on port 8000, 8, and it will create dynamically uh, a Java class that will download the exploit, and the exploit is dy uh, created dynamically also specifically for this attack machine. So the exploit Java class has been created, the LDAP server has been set up, and this is the string that I can use to attack the system. Also, the web server has been created or started on, the, on port 8000. So again, curl, we don't need all the headers uh, in this case. So curl HTTP uh, victim.simbit.lab port 8080 slash login and it needs to be a post and my data is uh, uname equals my new attacker string okay. and password is dummy uh, wrong. and if all goes well let's create a few extra lines here if all goes well, we should see the login uh, post. We then see an LDAP connection to get the, uh, the reference to the to the exploit, and then you will see that the uh, Log4j library will get the exploit from the HTTP server. So but, uh, let's see. Uh, there's a little bit too much over here. You can see the, the LDAP connect. Yeah, the post over here. The LDAP connection is started over here. Once it received the object, it uh, references the web server. So you see that the exploit is started. And after the exploit has been started, you can see that there is a connection being set up to my uh, refer shell, or at least the, the receiver for the refer shell. So you see that the connection from the web server was received by the refer shell. And uh, if I look at, I've got access to the system, and I'm actually root on the system. This means I can do anything that I like on the system and turn it into 
my bot or whatever I want to do with it. So again, the, um, all the packets that you see here, I will save them to a file and make them available. Um, so the, it's a it's a post, then an LDAP connection, then a retrieval of the exploits. It starts the exploit, which will start a um, refer shell to the port that I opened up for the refer shell. So that's it. I hope you liked the explanation of this, uh, how the attack works, and uh, I hope you will enjoy the PK file that, uh, that I will provide.